Going on, Jerome. So your Minnesota Fine Vikings are 5-0 and headed into the bye week, and they beat down the Giants week one. They handled the San Francisco 49ers week two. They did atrocious, atrociously bad things to the Houston Texans week three. Uh, they, they got after the Packers for the first part of the game <laughs> and then held them off at the end. Uh, and then against a-, a Ron Rogers and the, the jets, the guy after things were Rogers has only thrown five career pick sixes. Sunday was one of them. And Rogers career high for interceptions in a game is three. He's done that six times. And Sunday was one of them. Uh, and yeah, Rogers just like not, not feeling great about, about things, but uh, Vikings are flying high five and zero. Oh, and I, I understand, you know, the people are concerned about the second half against the jets and the Packers. I get it. I, I get it, but just step back for a second. So your team is five and zero. Oh. your team has shown shades of being one of the best offenses in the game. Your defense is clearly the best defense in the national football league. And also your kicker is looking pretty, pretty, pretty damn good. I'm trying to jinx things, but, you know, uh, but now into the bye, getting healthy, and you got a big battle coming up week seven uh, against the Lions, but we'll, we'll get there when we get there. But here, Tan, Tan, truths about your Minnesota Fine Vikings. Numero uno, best defense in the NFL. And I don't think it's particularly close. And this is honestly approaching territory where it may be the best Vikings defense I've ever seen. And respect to the peak. You know, 2017 Zimmer defense, I wasn't around for the Purple People Eaters, but the way that Flores and company gets after their business and every single week someone else steps up and they play swarming team defense and they, whenever they need a play, they get a play, right? And, you know, the fact that when they've given up points, generally it's been on a short field because of a mistake by the offense or the special teams, this is an elite Tier one defense. They take the ball away. They they make stops in, in key situations. And honestly, they're a lot of fun, man. They get after that quarterback's ass. And I like I'm trying my best not to be a prisoner of the moment and not be hyperbolic and have recency bias. But I'm scanning my brain. I can't rem. Right now, this is up there with peak 2017 Zimmer. I I think that it's better. I think that it's a better modern-day defense. Next up, number two, punt coverage return was ass. Now, it's been sort of an issue, right? So you had the Dallas Turner thing against Green Bay, and also the, you you had you know, Caleb Evans issues on Sunday. So that's something that's got to get shorn up. Now, initially I was going to say special teams writ large is ass, but that's not true because Ryan Wright, frankly, has been solid. Will, Will Rackard, who we'll talk about in a sec, has been sublime. Uh, so Coach Hat, I mean, they have to get after things. And you know, losing Najee Thompson, people are just like, yeah, whatever, he's a punt gunner. Uh, he's an elite punt gunner. And you see now Jay Ward having issues. You see uh, Caleb Evans obviously having issues. So I, I think that you're going to see – a churning at the bottom of the active game day roster. It wouldn't shock me at all if they come out of the bye week and Dwight McLaughlin uh, is active, or you know, some someone else is called up to take a Caleb Evans spot because it's just an issue. And all the hidden yardage, and also during the Jets, every single time, uh, every single time Powers returning a punt, you're worried that Evans is going to run into him, right? And I mean that that's something that they obviously saw in film, something that the Jets were trying to do specifically. And you know, don't get me started on the whole Jalen Naylor debacle against Green Bay, but that's something that's got to get shored up because that hidden and not so hidden yardage matters at the end of the day. So you know, Coach Hat, Coach Daniels, I uh, got to get after things. Number three, second half offense could cost them because. It's fantastic that they got out to big leads and able to to sustain uh, against the Packers and the Jets. But at, at a certain point, like what if you don't start out fast? What if you don't build up that lead? And it, it is concerning that the Vikings offense stalled uh, in the second half against the Packers and the Jets. There's a lot of mitigating factors there, whether for the Jets, but also it gets into coaching. It gets into adjustments. It gets into momentum and all that stuff. Now, respect, Darnold did lead the offense on – you know, game ceiling, game bracing field goal drives against both the Packers and the Jets. So you got to respect that. But at a certain point, they got to be out of the gates like their hair is on fire, right? So they've been a very fast starting team. They built up double digit leads early and uh, on top of shutouts the last four weeks. So they have to be able to finish strong. They already finished pretty good, but out of the gates in the second half, that, that's something that they're going to have to work on uh, during the break. Next up, number four, Sam Darnold will be fine. 
All right, so slinging Sam Darnold, a.k.a. America's quarterback, uh, did not have a great day uh, against the Jets. But his season so far in aggregate is phenomenal, right? So, And he had a bad day. You're tearing one down against his former team, against an elite, elite defense in the Jets. Uh, neutral site, should have been a home game, uh, as well as you know, w- weather was a factor as well, like we said. So I, I, I just chalk it up as wasn't a great day. And you know, maybe Darnold and Kevin O'Connor were trying to hard because it's the Jets, uh, but he'll settle down. And we, we've seen him play elite football. I mean, September NFC Offensive Player of the Month. And this isn't a situation of, oh, he's seeing ghosts. Oh, the sh- other shoe has dropped. Oh, he's a pumpkin again. Oh, teams now have film on him, so they're getting out. No, it's not going to be the case. Like, Sam Darnold will certainly be fine. Uh, next up, number five, is Will Rockard uh, already elite? I think we're approaching that territory. So Reichard is 16 to 16 on point afters. He's 9 to 9 on field goal attempts, including 3 to 3 from 50 plus, long of 58. He clanged that one in uh, against the Texans. Also, the 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 54 yarder uh, against the Jets was fantastic, uh, but also the 53 yarder when it's starting to really rain. That one that one holds up. That one was huge, absolute monster uh, kick by Will Reichard. So I think that he. It was approaching what you want from a kicker, and it was a great draft pick by uh, by Quasi and company. And also, like he's just got the best demeanor, and he seems like a down to earth kid. He's got a good head on his shoulders. He doesn't get too high, he doesn't get too low, and that's always the concern about kickers. Like they're going to turn into a basket case and get inside their own head, and they can be their own worst enemy. I don't think Rackard's going to have that issue. Hmm. Uh, next up, number six, twenty twenty four is not twenty sixteen. Now I, I understand. The, the people want to make the comparisons. Uh, the people, oh, especially the ones who want to be negative. It's like, oh, uh, well, the 2016 team was, uh, the 2016, where is it? Ah, there it is. The 2016 team was 5-0 and oh heading into the bye, and then they ended up 8-8. Eight and eight. We said that at the time, because actually, I think we're at, uh, we were doing the audio podcast at the time. But it was great feeling 5-0, and oh, but that team, you were waiting for the, the other shoe to drop. Because not only... Every single bounce and every single freak play went the Vikings' way. Now, I, the Vikings have had two pick sixes, which is great, but there's like three pick or fumble sixes. There was two punt return touchdowns in there. Every single fumble return went the Vikings' way. There was ricochet interceptions. There was everything, man. I, I, I think they won the turnover battle in their first five games 12-1, to 1, something that wasn't sustainable. And remember, this was uh, 2016 where – Teddy's leg fell off in training camp. They traded for Sam Bradford to start the year. Uh, Sean Hill actually started week one against Tennessee. And Bradford, I mean, came in and was good. But also, there was a lot of smoke and mirrors. And even hardcore Vikings fans at the time, like, they weren't even trying to be negative. They were just calling a spade a spade. Like, that team was ready for a fall. Then they went and lost eight out of their next ten games, including four in a row. And... Also, it wasn't even close. Like that offense got anemic, scoring 10, 10, uh, 16, 20 in losses. Like, uh, and it was just just not good. Also, ooh, I, I remember the week 15 game at home against the Colts in a must win situation. The Vikings were 7 and 6, and their playoff dreams, uh, hopes, and dreams were still alive at home. And it was the annual Zimmer no call, no show game where the Vikings just got schwacked. They they just got shall- thirty four to six, yikes! I Chihuahua, it was just tough, man. But yeah, th- that team was a bunch of pretenders. This team has the best defense in the National Football League. The offense has shades of being a top five unit. Darnold, when he's on, can look like an MVP. And there's nothing fluke about this team. This team can travel. This team can go toe to toe with anyone in the National Football League. And I, I full confidence in that. Uh, next up, number seven. Trade for a running back. So the Vikings, uh, the Vikings uh, running back room. I don't know. So they, they've shuffled things. Miles Gaskin down the practice squad. They're gonna have to call him back up because he's out of uh, practice squad elevations. But Ty Chandler struggled pretty mightily against the Jets. Now part of it is the Jets defense is fantastic, uh, but in contrast Aaron Rodgers, or excuse me, Aaron Jones, the good A. Ron was really solid. Uh, but then he had that hip injury. Hopefully it'll be good to go uh, after the bye. But also. They have to monitor his snap count, right? And maybe this is a bit of a knee-jerk reaction, sure, but I I like Ty Chandler a lot. Is he better in a supplemental role? Maybe. Look at some of the running backs on the market. Is Travis Etienne going to be on the move? Who knows? But 
either way, they, they should look to bring in an extra body who they could ha- have some comfort with because Jones can't keep up this workload and this pace that he's on. Like, you simply can't do it. I understand you, you want him to to get work because he's doing well now, but do you want him healthy in – in in do you want him doing well in late September early October or do you want him doing well in January February so so I guess we'll see uh, next number eight Hawkinson back means this offense is gonna be the best in the league right and I I, I love and respect Johnny Munt to death as well as Josh Oliver his role doesn't really change being a, a great blocking tight end but once you add T J Hawkinson who's a top three tight end he's not three. Just that receiving threat over the middle is going to become Sam Darnold's best friend. And you add that to Jefferson and Addison, Speedy Naylor, who they should have utilized more against the Jets, and also um, Jones and Chandler out of the backfield. It's over. That's a wrap. That's a wrap. It's like adding gasoline to a a raging grease fire. And whenever he gets back, he gets back. Whether It's probably not going to be against the Lions, just reading the tea leaves. Could be against the Rams, could be against the Colts. Either way, whenever he gets back, it's going to be fantastic. It's going to be really good. Uh, next up, number nine, the early bye week is good. So initially when the schedule came out, c- kind of pissing and moaning about the early bye sort of is what it is. But you know, the thinking is that you want that late bye so you can get healthy at the right time. The attrition of the season has already dug in. But, I mean, there's teams on bye week five, like the Lions and the Titans and whatnot. It seems a little bit early, but, I mean, the Vikings have uh, an assortment of nicks and bruises. You look at a- Aaron Jones, uh, Darnold uh, with the knee as well as with the ri- uh, potentially with the ribs now. Uh, and also, you know, various players, are, are I'm sure, are dinged up. So having a week to get everyone as close to 100% as possible, hard reset. Also, same thing with Hawkinson. Maybe they eventually kickstart Reisner's practice window uh, in week seven. So we'll see. But either way, it's good. Now, I wish that Thursday night football would have been spaced out a little bit better. You know, I say the Vikings play Thursday night football week, you know, 13 or 14. So you get that de facto extra buy. But you know, like I said, you play what the schedule is and don't flex any of these games to prime time, man. No, no, no. Flex Kurt Cousins game to prime time just to see if he actually is prime time Kurt now. Mm. Lastly, number 10, uh, still the best team in the National Football League. I, I, I know the frustration of the second half against the Packers and also trying to give it away, give it away, give it away now uh, against the Jets, but they didn't, right? So at the end of the day, you are what your record says you are. The Vikings by hook or by crook found ways to win against the Packers and the Jets. And also, these aren't slappies. Like th- This isn't like the Seahawks who only beat uh, teams below 500 to start 3-0. This is not like the Bears. Hey, congratulations for beating the Panthers in your building. Awesome. So, I mean, the Giants... I mean, you saw what the Giants did to the Seahawks. The Giants have one of the best defensive lines in the game. The Niners are still legit, even though they're they're two and three. Uh, the Texans, I mean, you, Texans are four and one. Where the one come from? Uh, Texans have a couple of impressive wins in a row, especially against the Bills. Also, the Packers. I I hate the Packers, but I've been told that reliably that they're one of the best teams in the league and the best team, uh, one of the best teams in the NFC. Also, with the Jets, I was told reliably that Aaron a- Rodgers is an MVP uh, caliber talent who still has it. That's what I was told. And then the Vikings picked him off three times and sacked him a bunch of times too. Mm. Uh, so either way, they're not doing this a bunch, uh, against a bunch of slappies. This is an elite team with an elite defense. Offensively, they'll get their minds right or I'll get them right for them. And special teams, special teams got to get it figured out. Right? But this is ultimate privilege. The Vikings are undefeated. They are 5-0 and and we're picking nits on a way to get them better. Right? It's ultimate privilege fan snobbery privilege it you know and also you know the fact that so many people thought that well you know if things go well they'll be two and three at the buy spare me spare me but it's right this is a fun season this is a chance to be a very special season and let's keep this thing rolling yeah uh but your thoughts our thoughts tan tan a uh, truce how about your five and oh minnesota fine vikings let us know your thoughts our thoughts comment section you know what to do skull production value